First of all, again, we'd like to say all praises be to the Most High, Ahaya, in the name of Yeshaya. We're here on the Sabbath ending the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? When the sun go down this evening, it will be into the eighth day celebration, okay? Which is the end of the Feast of Tabernacles in which the children of Israel, our people, dwelled in booths, okay? We have many brothers and sisters worldwide who, who had the liberty to be able to, uh, the liberty of going out camping and seeing how it is out there for one week straight, being one with nature, linking in to the Most High, and we, our prayers and, and, our, and the Spirit goes with them and protect them. And, you know, we're going to be dealing with this on a regular basis <laughs> soon in the wilderness once again. And I'm going to go into a defined lesson on the wilderness very soon. Now, this class, brothers and sisters, will not be a long class at all. We just wanted to just shore up the end of our... Uh, what you would call 12-part series. We did two and one in, in certain instances, but it's still a 12-part series breaking down the 12 tribes of Israel in its entirety and where you can identify or find them today. Okay, today we're going to go, in, go in into two of the brothers uh, of, of the tribes, the patriarch uh, Issachar as well as Asher. Two from the South Americas. We're going to go into a little bit of history, biblically down those two. All right, and because it's going to be fairly a short class today, uh, all praises be to the Most High for be His will. We will be answering some questions. All right. Another thing is, right after this, we have to break out and go directly to the feast where brothers and sisters are waiting and preparing now. But we thought that. It would be a disservice to have two weeks in a row in which we didn't have too much classes for those who don't have, uh, you know, the blessing of being able to have someone to gather with on our holy days. OK, so we figured instead of doing two weeks in which we're barely there and then come back the following week after the feast, we thought that myself and lawyer would do some class because everyone don't have the. Uh, the autonomy to be able to go outside and, and go with their brothers and sisters in their respective areas. We have a, a wide uh, internet following. So we didn't want you to feel left out. Now, if those that are still gathering and still have the class, then you have a double bonus. But we didn't want brothers and sisters who depend on this spiritual food from week to week to feel left out during the time of the feast. So we thought that we would make our time at least for a few hours or a maximum minimum maximum an hour excuse me to make sure we still put out some spiritual food for our brothers and sisters and answer some questions but keep in mind right after that we got a break right out because we have a feast waiting for us mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is we like to thank the most high uh, for the uh, the participation uh, that the participants and all the brothers and sisters that are in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. I mean, uh, I think we have the highest enrollment uh, in our three-month course with this particular academy opposed to uh, uh, any other academy, even though all of them have been great. I remember people in it, mm -hmm. but it was still a blessing. So I don't want to minimize the blessing that began to grow, okay? We, we value that as well as we do now, those that are coming in, but we really thank the Most High. In five years, and uh, a lot of brothers and sisters have supported the work. This was our highest enrollment yet, so I thank the Most High for that. We're in our second week, starting tomorrow, and I can't wait. We'll be going into tomorrow. We'll be going into tracing the serpent seed, and I and we're going to go into that not like ever before. Actually, going into the fall of the fallen angels. Uh, that happened before Genesis 6. Before the fallen angels slept with women, there was another fall that we're going to tackle and show you what was going on in the heavenly realm before earth or while earth was being created. So I'm going to be going into that tomorrow, all praises be to the Most High, tracing serpent seed. And we're going to link that all the way from the fall to the fallen angels 
who end up dealing with women and bringing forth a satanic religion on earth and tainting mankind to the point where the Most High had to send a decree to destroy the earth through a flood, break up the earth, which was one mass at one point, and then start civilization through Noah and his three sons. And then after that, there was another fall that led to the Canaanites operating on the, the, our side of the flood now. That when Israelites, when our people went out of it, came out of Egypt, we had to war against these Nephilim bloodlines that was in Israel. The Most High had us march around Jericho and take the promised land, which was being ruled by spirits of Canaanites and Amorites, children of the Nephilim. And these beings have been battling against us ever since. So I'm going to go into that because it's important that we know uh, the battle we're in. And that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, the workers of iniquity in high places. And they also have dominion, not only on the outside of this earth, looking down on us, but within the earth, controlling all of our politicians and world leaders. So I want to go into that tomorrow, tracing serpent seed, the serpent seed, so that we can have the insight and mindset the disciples and Christ and our people had before the fall, concerning our true physical battle in the earth too okay it's spiritual but it's physical also there is a people in this earth that are linked and are getting direct uh, 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 directions and technology from the fallen ones to war against the children of God who we are the children of Israel okay and one of our greatest downfalls is the fact that not only did we lose our history we have no understanding fathom the war that's against us. It's greater than a conspiracy. We can't even fathom why they ramped up the vaccine program and how they always cook up a new war so our people can die in and how they've separated our families and now attacking the women and, and making them more fearful. And all this is aiming towards us. This is the same thing happened before the flood and it's our seed, the chosen seed of Israel at war with the serpent seed. See, but we can't even fathom this conspiracy against us because we don't have no idea who's behind the, the attacks. We don't even understand why we are in the attacks. We don't even understand why there's war waged against us. Why the whole earth and prison complex is waged against us. Tomorrow, that this is an ancient war. And see, our shortcoming is the fact that we think everything is relative. We believe everything is organic and these things just happen to us naturally. That's part of the deception. We are in a war based on the fact that they understand the prophecies. They know our end. They know that at the end of this, those that make it through will rule and have power forever. They're trying to thwart that power. They want us as a people to fall with them. They're trying to take as many of us as they can. So we have to understand this war, who's waging this war, and stand on the right side against those who oppose us. That's why these lessons are so important. And that's why we've quantified these lessons in the Bible Academy. So that brothers and sisters can now take their time on a scholastic and scholarly level, going into the Bible, going into the history books, going into the Josephus, and understand our history and tie it into our present day war. So that we can be on the right side with Yeshua, with whom they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. And war against those who are warring against us spiritually. Alright? So now, without any further ado, let's go into the lesson. Today we'll be breaking down two of the twelve tribes of Israel. I think this is the last of the two, right? I think there's a few more. We have a few more. Okay, well don't worry about it. We'll get the rest. But right now we'll be going into Issachar. In Asher. Okay, Issachar and Asher. Now, these particular tribes are predominantly from the ten tribes that left in 721 BC under the Northern Kingdom. Okay, the kingdom was split in 721 BC. After the sin of after the sin of Solomon, there was a split where the Most High said, You know what? We're going to rent your kingdom from you because you've turned to Satan. Okay, you've turned to the gods of the Gentiles. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rent the kingdom in two. But I'm going to keep one for my son David. That one he kept for David is Judea or Judah, Benjamin and Levi who, who, who predominantly ruled in the southern kingdom up until Christ's time. Past Christ and the disciples time until we fell in 70 AD. Okay, but there was one tribe or one kingdom, which is the northern kingdom, who were taken out of Israel 700 some odd years before Christ was born and they came to the Americas. You're going to find out that Issachar and Asher were two of those ten. Let's get the prophecies in 2 Kings 17. Then we're going to go into Issachar, then Asher. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. Yes. And they followed vanity and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them. We began to go uh, and operate with the heathen. See? Dealing with the, the heathens' religions. Read. Concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Come on. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made the molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. So we and, and deal with worshipping the host of heavens. These are fallen angels. See, all religions are hiding the fact that they're really worshiping and honoring fallen, demonic, satanic forces that fell since the beginning. Mm -hmm. You have what you call the old gods and the new gods. You see that on, uh, what, what's that? Game the Game of Thrones. The old gods were the original one-third that fell from heaven in a revolt. The new gods are those that fell during Genesis 6 when the, they came down and slept with women. You have the old gods and the new gods. See? Go on. Verse 17. So, so what happens is nations began to reverence these, the, these deities by making idols in the shape of these deities and worshiping them. See? Give them information on what to put up and what, what, to, what, what image to make for them so that now that spirit can service that person. Where now... You are becoming an humble servant to him to do his will on earth. And in return, you get reward or blessing, what they call blessing, which is really a wish. You're getting a wish granted from a genie or a jinn. But in return is your soul. See? So they set up a whole religious system in which you must give reverence or honor to fallen gods. See? Now our people Israel began to follow this. Instead of following the God that made them, the God of Adam, the God of Shem, the, I mean the God of Seth, the God of Enoch, the God of Noah, the God of uh, uh, Shem, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Instead of following that God, we began to worship and honor lesser gods. So if you want to, if you want, if you want the answer to the question, if there's life outside of earth, of course there's life outside of earth. Life came from the heavens when the Most High created. We just went into that last week in creation. Of course, that's no mystery. We are a product of a heavenly realm. Of course, there's life outside of here. A life force. Okay? And there's a life force with the gods that fell. See? But the whole deal is the Gentiles are following that life force instead of the life force that created the fallen angels. We were supposed to be special. We were supposed to be different. We were supposed to be in righteousness to war in this realm against the fallen sons of God. The Most High made us in his image to war against those that fell. We weren't supposed to worship and honor the fallen angels. I don't care what, how good their religion feels or sad. And that's why, the, that's why Paul tells us we must be careful. Lest we be voluntarily worshiping angels. You have to be careful. Because a lot of us don't even know we're worshiping angels in these churches. And the chief angel we're worshiping in these religions. Islam and Christianity, Hinduism, you name it. Buddhism, you name it. 
They're all worshiping Satan at the helm, the fallen angel, which the Masons call Jogula, which the Jewish people call Yahweh or Yehovah or Yahweh. That's the head angel. Our people began to make sacrifices to this God, the, the God of the Tetragrammaton, the, the Canaanite God. Go on. Verse 17. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Most High. When, it's, when it says he built two calves, the two calves is in two separate languages. One Yahweh and the other Jehovah or Yahweh. Okay? And we began to put our children in this calf, Moloch. A sacrifice, a child sacrifice that happened through sexual ritualistic magic. We will bring forth that child in that ritual and that child, if it was conceived out of that ritual, it would go into the bull and be burned to the god Moloch. We began to do this. The same thing they're doing in San Francisco till this day at the Bohemian Grove. Because Satan requires a sacrifice and total obedience under his Molochian or Moloch religion. See, our people began to follow these ways. The Gentiles always sacrificed gods. That was just their way. That's mainstay for them. It's part of their culture. We were supposed to be different. Go on. Verse 18. Therefore the Most High Ahiah was very angry with Israel. Come on. It moved them out of his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Now when it says he removed Israel from out of his sight. Now some people might ask, well Israel, isn't that all Israel? Well no. Once the kingdom was split, they were split into two separate families. Two separate kingdoms. One kingdom was called Judea or Judah. Which Judah, Benjamin and Levi resided in. Which is the southern kingdom, lower parts of Israel. And at the northern kingdom, it was called Israel. It's like two separate states, one called Judah, the other Israel. Well, Judah had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Israel, Israel at the northern kingdom had what? The rest of the tribes. See? So Israel started with Ephraim, which was now the king over Israel. So you had Jeroboam and Rehoboam. You had Rehoboam over the southern kingdom, over Judea. And you had Jeroboam, which was an Ephraimite over the ten tribes or Israel. So because of this sin, the Most High said he's going to remove the ten tribes of Israel out of his sight. See? His sight is the place of his holy people, the land that was chosen to hold such a people, which is Israel. So when it says remove them out of his sight, it's not saying that he's going to move them into a place where they can't be seen. It's saying he's going to move them from the chosen land, the, the, the land of his eye in. See, he's going to take that, those ten tribes out and rip them out of the land. See, why? Because Israel began to curse the land with their sacrifices and evil doing, following the ways of the Gentiles. The new age religions that was back then. The same religions today. There's no difference. Behind the scenes, they're sacrificing us, doing the same things that, did, that they did back then. Okay, go on. Verse 19. Come on. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Most High, their power. So our people, Judah began to follow the ways of the Gentiles also. Read. But walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. Come on. Verse 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Come on. And afflicted them. And afflicted them. And, the, Salaki, and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers. So, so in return for us doing such an evil on the Most High's land, he said that he would give us over to what? Spoilers. The nations would now have the power to come in and to loot us and to take us and to enslave us. See, that's the answer to slavery. That's why we were enslaved. 
Okay, it wasn't because somebody didn't like someone else and all this and all people get a chance to serve other people. That's garbage. Okay, they're trying to totally deflect us from understanding that we are the people of the curse. They're trying to deflect that. The reason why we went into cargo slave ships and not the other nations were spoiled by the conquistadors and the Spaniards and Rome was based on our sins against our father. Ahia, who gave us our land, Israel. We sinned against him, so now he's going to now turn the Gentiles, whose gods we're following, against us. See? Read. Until he had cast them out of his sight. That means out of his land. Verse 21. For he rent Israel from the house of David. Rent means to tear. Go on. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nabat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Most High Ahiah and made them sin a great sin. Come on. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did. They departed not from them. Come on. Until the Most High Ahiah removed Israel out of his all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land. That's what, you, that's what it means by being moved out of his sight. Read that last part again. Until Therefore, the Lord had removed Israel out of his sight, as he said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land. That's what being moved out of his sight means. Now he's sending the Gentiles to operate against Israel so that now they can fulfill the enslavement of losing Israel altogether. And see, and that's how we know that the people in Israel today, which are Gentiles or Romans and Europeans, cannot be the true children of God. Okay? The Most High, as a curse, moved Israel out of the land, and part of the curse is that all of the tribes of Israel would lose any memory concerning them being the children of God. They would lose that through being moved out of the land. That means they would have almost a permanent amnesia concerning their true identity. So how can now some Jewish people wake up and say Israel belongs to us when part of the curse is you don't even know you're an Israelite? See? <laughs> See, that's how we know these people over there cannot be the people. They do not fit the prophecies. The restoration of Israel that we read of in Scripture is when the Messiah returns. There's no restoration that's set up through the UN and through Rome, through Great Britain, and agreements between the Europeans to take and put a state in Israel. That's no Scripture that says that. That the enemies of the Most High would set up God's people in his own land. That's how we know they can't be the people. See, they was able to take advantage of the fact that we lost our identity and by default claim a land that wasn't theirs. See, there was a void in the land. Once this curse was fulfilled, the land was vacant and all the Gentiles began to cast lots and actually auction off our land for their own heritages. See, and now you got the Europeans coming at the very end saying, well, hold up, that, that, that land don't belong to you either. At least we have state claim to being Jewish, so we're going to take the land now. Since the real people are not staking claim to it, we're going to steal it. We're going to rule from the Holy Land. See? It was more a political move than it was a religious move because the Jewish people, the majority of those that inhabited and set up the land were, were satanic atheists. Okay? A lot of them were sorcerers. 200 of the top sorcerers, Jewish sorcerers from Babylon, went into to the land, the state of Israel, before it became Israel. See? They went from Iraq and took that magic out of Iraq, which is Babylon, into Israel to begin that system, setting up that satanic sorcery system, or what we would call the Masonic system, that would one day be the state of Israel. See, it, it was atheist and Satanist that set up Israel, okay? The, the modern day Israel. 
They don't even believe in the Most High the way we believe. They don't even deal with the Bible and, 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 and hope state claim to the Bible. They, they follow the, the Talmud and the Kabbalah, the tree of, of good and evil. See? But what they do is they play on our ignorance because we just so gullible and they know we're up in the churches. So they'll now come into churches and bring a doctrine that exalts and back their false doctrine as them being the people. They use that in the Christian church to say, well, listen, you follow Jesus, you follow God. Well, look, we're the people. See? You must love us then. You must care for us because we're God's people. See? They use the campaign of the Christian church to continue their false doctrine. But the real people would discontinue from their heritage. Let's get that real quick. In Jeremiah 17. That's how we know those people in Israel today are imposters. And a lot of them, it's not their fault. They're only walking walk in the line and, and toe in the line their, their fathers gave them. But even they are waking up and realizing that they don't fit the prophecies. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of the rabbis are against the Bible. How can you be against the, the book, the only book that gives you credibility that allowed you to get the land? So a lot of the Jewish people are realizing that they are part of a lie too. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. Yes. And thou... Even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. See, the Most High said that Israel would discontinue from their heritage. And we would forget who we, were, who we are. See, read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. And I, first of all, first of all, you would discontinue from your heritage. How can that happen? Slavery, captivity, losing your history, being retort by your enemies. See, and he says, I will cause the cause is bringing in the Gentiles to kill off the wise of your people to teach, to give you new education, to give you a new history. And omitting all any, any history that can connect you with your God and your land. See, go on. I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Because we didn't know anything called any place called America. See, the, a matter of fact, the place of the Americas was moved far west, way from the east. So he says, I'm going to cause you to do what? I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. We didn't know anything about America back then. See, we didn't know anything about that. So he says, I'm going to cause you to serve in a foreign land. One moment here. Okay, read that last part again. I will cause thee, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. Now let's go back to 2 Kings 17 now. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 21. Come for, on. for he rent Israel out of the, the house of David, or from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them, until the Most High Ahia removed Israel out of his sight, as he said, as he had said by all his servants the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. When it says Assyria, the Most High put the spirit on the, the Assyrian king to take Israel down, which is the northern kingdom. See? And we served, well, the ten tribes served for a time there until they decided to now gather together and take their chance on the waters. Okay? To take their chance to get some ships and go on the waters and find another land outside of their captivity. Outside of the Assyrian king. Okay? Let's get that. Second Ezra 13 and 39. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 39. One moment. Take 
picking up where we left off at, brothers and sisters, we went into the fact that uh, you would have a prophecy in 2 Kings 17 that Israel would be moved out of the Most High's sight, right? Moved out of the land. The Assyrians took Israel down, which is the ten tribes, and it was prophesied that this would happen in the Apocrypha. Second Edris, the 13th chapter, and the 39th verse. Letting, telling us how the ten tribes or the Indian tribes were in the Americas before the slaves of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi got to the Americas. See? Some 700, 700 years later, 720 semi years later, from the time of Christ, earlier before the time of Christ, there was a split in which the northern kingdom inhabited all the uninhabited lands outside of the known lands of ancient times. That's how our people began to spread, like the lessons we went, how we went into different parts of Australia, different parts of South America, North America. At this time, they, these places weren't called North America or named after the Roman Empire because these lands were not discovered by the Romans at that at, in, the, in its earlier days. See, but nonetheless, any land that was discovered by the Roman Empire was the children of Israel. All of them. How do we know this? If it must be discovered, then it fulfills the prophecy of Israel going into a land where never mankind dwelt. So any land that you can see European conquest or discovery by default is the lost tribes of Israel. By default. Because we had knowledge. The whole world at that time that I'm reading had knowledge of, of the lands of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So what lands weren't discovered? The lands that were moved further west after the flood. So the Most High had these lands hidden from the old world. So in Second Ezra, it breaks it down. And, and what's deep is they tell our, the Christian church tell their, uh, their parishioners or their followers not to respect the Apocrypha. That it's not spiritually, uh, spiritually what they call it, inspired. inspired. Mm -hmm. And the reason they say this, brothers and sisters, is because if our people in South America were to read these scriptures in its proper context, they would realize that they fit the people that left Israel. So they had to take this out all together and give you a King James Bible without information so that we could not connect ourselves to those that fell and began to serve the Gentiles in captivity. Through captivity. See? See? Let's read it. 2nd Ezra 13 and 39, the prophecy. 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 39. Yes. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. So when Christ returns, it's speaking of this man coming out of the waters. It's speaking of Christ. When Christ returns, he's going to gather the multitude together to himself. That's when the people, that's when God's people will be restored back into Israel, and not before then. Okay, read. Verse 40. These are the ten tribes, or those are the ten tribes, which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Those were the ten tribes that were carried away captive out of their own land. What we read in 2 Kings 17. See how the precepts link this directly to the, those people. So now we can further identify where those people went. See, the world powers don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know that the people that they discovered were from the lost tribes of Israel. They don't want you to know this because you realize you have no business serving them. You, you realize that they are a base satanic sect that we have no business serving. The only reason we're serving them now, brothers and sisters, is because of a curse. You know that, right? It wasn't meant to be that way. It was our following them that caused the Most High to put us under them. The Bible.
on it. How long have I not been on it? Five minutes. So we can check and see if you know. Okay, one more. Okay. Since when all the board is over. Okay. Okay. Before I go any further, Dell, do you see and hear me clearly here? Yes? Yeah, they see me. Yeah, it's fine. Great, great. Read that last part again. Yes, sir. This is uh, 2nd Ezra 13 and 39. Come on. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. He gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Who are they? These are the ten tribes which were carried away captive or carried away prisoners out of their own land at the time of Hosea the king. So fulfilling what the scripture said here. See? In 721, according to 2 Kings 17, we were taken out of the land. Read. Whom Solomon Nassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. Carried them over the water, see. And they came into another land. Verse 41. See, they came into another land. Now, back then, because these lands were not founded, you have the Gentiles theorizing that the earth was flat and, and that if they sailed, they would fall off of the earth. Why? Because when they would try to send their ships out there, the Most High would have Leviathan or storms destroy them. Therefore, there was no proof that other lands existed at this time. So they believed there was no other land, no other place to live. They had an entirely different map than the world map we have today. See? But the Most High showed signs and wonders and, 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 and delivered them and showed them information concerning lands that was outside of the old world so that our people would have what? An alternative from our captivity during that time of the, under the Assyrians. Read. Verse 41. But, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt. Where never mankind dwelt. I'm going to show you how our people got to the Americas. Read. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Come on. Verse 43. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. It took us a year and a half to get through the countries into the waters to go over the waters and go into the Americas. See, I'm talking about the ten tribes there. Read. And the same region is called Arsareth. Now the Bible, or the Apocrypha, call it Azareth, which means hidden land. It wasn't until later the Romans began to name these lands after their own names, like America, or United States of America, which is a corporation, or South America, or Canada, or Hawaii, see what I'm saying? Or Australia. All the hidden lands together that was not a part of the original old world is named Osirith. After its attribute, hidden land. See? Read. Uh, verse 46. No, now let's go into Issachar now. Let's go into Issachar. We went through the majority of them. We only have a few to go. Now let's go into Issachar, who was a part of the ten tribes that was prophesied to go into the Americas. Read. Uh, Genesis chapter 30, verse 18. Come on. And Leah said, God have given me higher, because I have given my maiden to my husband. Come on. And she called his name Issachar. So now, Issachar name is what? Read it again. And Leah said, God have given me my higher. My higher. 
See? My hire. What's hire? To work. To be hired or to be employed. See? See how our attributes link in to who we are today based on our birth name? We know that the Mexicans are known for getting hired for low wages. See? So the Bible tells Issachar what will befall him in the last days. And it's linked to that attribute he was born with. To work. See? To be hired. My hire. And you know what? This is one thing that's known throughout the whole earth concerning Issachar. They band together to work. See? For low wages. I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of some real good work. I'm not speaking of no cheap work. I'm speaking of some real high level work they'll do for cheap labor to have money go back for their families, to their families. See? To have money so that, to go back to help their home. My hire. See? Read on. Now let's go into... Genesis, the 49th chapter. Just a few precepts for Issachar. They're known as my hire. And these are the Mexicans. Read. Uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 14. Issachar is a strong ass couching, between two couching down between two burdens. It says Issachar is what? A strong ass Couching down between two burdens. When it says a strong ass, it's speaking of a donkey, which is known for work. Couching down between two burdens. The two burdens are the two donkeys. This is what Issachar used to do their labor or work. Right? Read. 15. And he saw that rest was good. The rest was in between the day because it's so hot in Mexico. They would have what you would call a siesta. During the hot time of day, they would rest. Because it was too hot to work. And then they would continue work again. They would, when, when it was high noon, or when the sun was at its height, they would rest. Siesta is in Mexico. And then when the sun began to dwindle down just a little, when the, the temperatures dropped, They'll begin work again. It's called siesta. See? Our father told Issachar he would be dealing with this in the last days. I'll tell you what will befall you in the last days. So even though Issachar over in Mexico don't have no idea who they are, you can identify them by the attributes. Being hired, working for nothing. Having siesta. It's too hot to work. So they have a part of day in which they go home and eat lunch with their family at the hottest part of day. Then what? They'll go right back to work. See? It's a car. See? Go on. And he saw that rest was good. And he saw that rest was good, the siesta. And the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear. He bowed his shoulders to bear. Read. And became a servant and, unto tribute. And became a what? A servant unto tribute. They tell you out of all the tribes, at the very end in the last days, Issachar would be known for being a servant unto tribute. That means they will work for almost nothing. And that's why the Americas now, the, uh, North America, have opened up the borders so that they can do work that normal people wouldn't want to do. Okay? The, the slaves in America, they feel, have gotten too high sedity or high on the horse where they don't want to do the low labor. So now, America has opened the borders to get cheap labor to replace the slaves that they're looking to eugenicize or depopulate. Okay? In America. Because why? They have office jobs, they have different jobs, and through the corporate technology... They don't need too many high workers anymore. Technology has cut down on, on employment. Mm -hmm. So what they do now is for the low things that, that are really low wages, because there's a minimum wage that they must pay the slaves in America, they'll just open up the borders and pay Issachar nothing. Base wages. See? 
But the, the prophecies tell us right here, according to scriptures, that Issachar, read that last piece again. And he saw that rest was good. He saw that rest was good. And the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. And became a servant unto tribute. Working for nothing. Working for almost nothing. But a lot of them work just to be in there long enough to try to get some citizenship. Okay? So the Bible tells, tells us that Issachar would be operating and working like this in the end days. Now, of course, their work will soon come to an end. When a number of them are delivered from this hell and receive the truth of the Most High. And prepare to do what? Rest. Now, some people might say, well, Issachar, they can't be us. They look like these people. They look like that people. Mexicans can't be us. Well, the Bible tell you that the ten tribes under Ephraim, because Ephraim was the head of Israel, would mix themselves with the other people. So just because they look different now doesn't mean they're not the children of Israel. Okay. Just because, you know, other nations came in and, and, and dealt and did all that. The Bible tell you that that, that would happen. Mm -hmm. But still, there's a large remnant of people in Mexico. The, the majority of the population through blood is Israel. Yes, there's other nations. There's other nations every place. But the majority of the population is Israel. It tell you that those under Ephraim would look like the other nations. So we're not to be racist against them because they're not all looking black like us. See? And that's a curse in itself, that we, have, we are vexing them and, and, and they envy us because we're looking at their skin color opposed to the fact, opposed to looking at the curses that they have suffered just like us. See? Let's get uh, uh, Ephraim. Hosea 7 and 8 real quick. And this, this relates to all the ten tribes that they've mixed themselves with the other nations, the other races. When the conquistadors and Spaniards and Romans came over, yes, they began, they, they began to rape and do all these things, but every, there wasn't a child from, from every rape. Mm -hmm. Okay? That doesn't mean these people are not your people. They're still the children of God. Read it. Uh, Hosea chapter 7 verse 8. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. Now, now when you see that word Ephraim, that represents all of the ten tribes. Ephraim is just the king of the ten tribes or the northern kingdom. So it's telling you the ten tribes mix themselves amongst the other nations. Predominantly the Europeans. Read Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake, not turn. When you look at a cake, not turn, it's light on one side, and un, it's light undone on one side, and cooked or dark on the other side. Same cake. See? Same cake. It's still, who? It's a cup. But you're going to have some light ones. It's still Ephraim, one of ten tribes. You have some light ones, and you'll have some dark ones. Because they mix. Who did they mix with? The conquerors when they came over to the Americas. You have anything on else on this card before we move to Asher? Uh, just one thing. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pull up some history. If I can mention something also on that, yeah. that last statement. Yeah. When you go into the history of the ten tribes, like Reuben, Gad, uh, Issachar, and many of the, the, the different tribes, once those initial generations were killed off, they would take the children and place them in these, uh, what they call boarding schools. And in these boarding schools, they basically tried to wipe out any level of remembrance of their heritage. And it would force them to look like, you know, they would have them cut their hair a certain type of way, dress a certain type of way to make them look like Europeans. Exactly. Because the whole thing was to try to wipe and, and separate them from their initial heritage. So that's why a lot of them, you know, have those features exactly. also. Exactly. A lot of them look a certain type of way because they were forced mm -hmm. to relinquish their culture. That was part of breaking 
the surgeons. You had to totally separate them from any culture or history that would take them back to their fathers or the honor of Israel and the laws and all those things. So what they did was they, they gave them an education which would actually promote more European styles. Mm -hmm. So you'll look at them dressed like Europeans, acting like Europeans, and then believe there's someone else. Well, that was the plan. That was the conspiracy. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And that, that, that didn't change to this day. Mm -hmm. See? They did the same to us. Yep. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, what you got is, in some history there? This is uh, from the Jewish Encyclopedia, The Lost Ten Tribes. It says, uh, America. It says, immediately after the discovery, discovery of Central and South America, the legend of the lost tribes began to be referred to the aboriginal inhabitants. Mm. Garcia and So this is a Jewish encyclopedia. Yes, sir. Telling you that the aborigines of, of Americas were originally determined or, or, or coined the children of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel. That was the original mindset concerning them when they found it. It wasn't until later they began to skew the lines and say, well, let's that, not tell the people. Why? Because you cannot have these people be Israelites and then have some Europeans from Causaria and Russia and Germany pop up and say, well, listen, we need that homeland. See, that would distort the whole thing because the whole world would cry out for the real people to get the land, if anything. See, so they had to downplay this. But originally, it's in the Jew Jewish encyclopedia. Originally, they knew that the people of the Americas that they founded or discovered were from the lost sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. Come on. It says, Garcia in his origin de los medianos uh, declares that the tribes passed over the strait of uh, Anemia, uh, or they call it the Bering Strait. The Bering Strait. They claim it was the mm -hmm. Bering Strait originally. Right. Go ahead. Right. And went by that way to Mexico and South America. He deduces their identity from the common cowardice and the want of charity of the Israelites and Indians. Mm. Both of these people, according to him, bury their dead on the hills, give kisses on the cheeks as a sign of peace, tear their clothes as a sign of mourning, and dance as a sign of triumph. Garcia claimed to have found many Hebrew terms in the American language. According to Manasseh ben Israel, Antonio Matazinos, deposed in, four, in 1644 before the, the Beit Dean of Amsterdam that while traveling in Peru he had met with a member of the natives recited, who recited, recited the Shema. Shema Yasha'ala So there's proof, and this is also written in, in Ronald Sanders' book, mm -hmm. that they seen them, Israel, every Sabbath doing the chant out in public, Shema Yasha'ala, in Deuteronomy 6 chapter. They knew this. Mm -hmm. Go on. It says, and who informed him through an interpreter that they were Israelites descended from Reuben, and that the tribe of Joseph dwelt in the midst of the sea. He supported their statements by tracing Jewish customs among the inhabitants of Central and South America. Central and South America. So the Jewish people, according to the Jewish encyclopedia, know that those in Central and South America are from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. They look to the Roman governments were looking to suppress this information from the world population so that they could control and use and destroy God's people and we would have no help. We would believe, he, they would make every book, everyone in the earth believe that we're the enemy through their media resources mm -hmm. while promoting themselves as God's people. Go on. It says, the Indians of the Yucatan and the Mexicans rent their garments in mourning and kept perpetual fires upon their altars, as did also the Peruvians. The, the Mexicans kept the Jubilee. The, the, the Mexicans kept the Jubilee. While the Indians of Peru and Guatemala observed the custom of leveret marriage. Mm. Basically, that's the marriage when a uh, yeah. brother dies. Exactly. When the brother dies, when, when one dies mm -hmm. without a child, the brother must marry the, marry the wife, right. the widow, to bear a son 
for his brothers, so his brother's line can continue. Mm -hmm. This is all in the law. Mm -hmm. See, Issachar, that's our brothers, those are our brothers and sisters. We were taught to look at them as something different. And that's why I hate this pro-black garbage that I'm hearing out here, that you can't be nothing unless you're black. Mm-hmm. And this Africa stuff, as if the Most High didn't scatter us ev- everywhere. And we're only thinking about us because we're dark-skinned, so we must be the people. Right. Let me tell you, that's another form of, 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 of self-hatred. To now only love those that look like you and ignore your brothers who are lighter skin. That's self-hatred too. They're still your brother. See? And we do this internally. Mm-hmm. We do this internally. Even amongst our people who we know are Israel. To show you something is seriously wrong. And that's part of our curse. You can't say it's because of, of Mexicans. And because these people. We do this and we live on the same block. And there's a dark skinned brother and a light skinned sister. Who, who live on the same block as you. That's not Mexican. Mm-hmm. To show you it's a curse. Of self-hatred. Go on. It says the Mexican theory was later taken up by Viscount Kingsborough, who devoted his life and fortune to prove the thesis that the Mexicans were descended from the lost tribes and published a magnific- uh, magnificent and expensive work on the subject, Antiquities of Mexico. Antiquities of Mexico. This guy spent his life coin. Mm-hmm. To prove and and to, to to make it fact, to prove that beyond any shadow of a doubt, the customs that was going on amongst these South American people could not could, could be no other than the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Their customs, their language, how they interacted was too close to to what the world learned concerning ancient Israel. Mm-hmm. How is it these people are still following the customs of, of ancient ancient Israel? See. While other civilizations progressed beyond that. But why did the Indians and and the Mexicans continue? Because they weren't a part of the progression of the old world. So when, when, when 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 the Romans found them, they were still acting as if they were still back in 721. They hadn't progressed with society. They were still doing the same customs and marriage and everything. See? Some thousand years later, almost a thousand years later, they find these people doing ancient customs. They must be the children of Israel. They're doing the same exact customs and things that we can read in the scriptures. They, they're following Leviticus. They're following the book of Numbers. They're following the chronology of the kings and how you set up kings and appoint kings. They're following the tearing of the hand and peace pacts. They're following everything according to the law. They must be the lost tribes. But I'm going to tell you, it wasn't until the, the, the Europeans came over and gave them Roman Catholicism. That, that's what really destroyed them all together. And they began to westernize them and make them believe they were a higher people outside of darker skinned people. They started to play that on the other side now. Where now they would have hatred, light against dark and all that. And to the point where Mexicans think they're another race. They look at us as an entirely different race. Not even knowing that we are brothers. We came out of the same mother. See? A lot of you don't even know that. Leah is our mother. Judah came out of Leah. Mm -hmm. See? Mexicans came out of Leah. We got the same mother and father. (laughs) We are brothers. Of course, at one time before the... The, the Romans came over, the conquistadors came over. Yeah, you were dark just like us. The majority of you, look at some of the images in Mexico. The wide noses and all that. Yeah. Because we have the same mother and father. See? But eventually when the Romans came over, we fulfilled Hosea the seventh chapter. They began to mix with the other people. And by the time we got to the Americas, a lot of Issacharites, a lot of them are dark just like us. When you look at some of those those remote areas, they're dark just like us. But a lot of them that are being promoted throughout the media or what have you, they're a little lighter skin now through time. But still, nonetheless, they're still the children of Issachar. 
You got anything on this card before we uh, go to Ashes? One last uh, piece, says, uh, Yes. Kingsborough's chief arguments are that the Mexicans and Israelites believe both in devils and angels as well as in miracles and the use of blood of the sacrifices in the same way, namely by pouring it on the ground. Also that the high priest of Peru is the only one allowed to enter the innermost holy part of the temple and that the Peruvians anointed the ark as did the Israelites. He also finds many similarities in the myths and legends. Thus certain Mexican heroes are said to have wrestled with Quetz uh, Quetzalcoatl, like Jacob with the angel. There you go. An ancient story that they use a different name with, mm -hmm. but it was still the same story of Jacob wrestling with the angel. All in the histories of, of the Issacharites. Mm -hmm. so. Issachar, a son of Israel, another lost tribe found. Now let's go into Asher. Uh, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 30, verse 12, or 13. Okay, now before you go there, let's make sure we give the references to some of that history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was all from the uh, Jewish Encyclopedia. Jewish Encyclopedia, and what would they look up in the Jewish Encyclopedia? Uh, the lost, lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes in the Jewish Encyclopedia. Look that up. So, that... that that tells us, that tells me, that even those that who study under Jewish religion know that the ten tribes, or those which were the aborigines of North, Central, and South America, are from the lost sheep of Israel. But it's, you know, they're not going to say anything. If we, if we don't say nothing, they won't say anything. Because by default, if they're the tribes of Israel, we have to look at these guys and say, well, okay, Rosenberg and Cohen and Rosen, mm -hmm. who, who are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we're the, if these are the, the lost tribes, where do you fit in that? Yeah, you 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 convert it. Okay, that's fine. You can say it. You convert it, but that doesn't make you a tribe of Israel. That makes you following uh, the religions and quote unquote quote unquote some of the customs of Israel. Okay, but if I was to become a Buddhist tomorrow, that don't make me Chinese. Okay, that don't change my, my ethnicity or my bloodline. Okay, so just because you made us into a religion doesn't mean you're an Israelite. An Israeli is different than an Israelite. Okay, okay, a Chinese person can go over to Israel right now, the state of Israel, and get citizenship and become an Israeli. It doesn't make them an Israelite. So being a citizen of a place and the bloodline through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is two separate things. So Jewish people are following some of the customs from week to week. Okay? But it's through conversion. It's like following a religion. A religion does not denote nation or nationality. They don't fit, you know, they don't fit nowhere concerning the prophecies of the Bible when it comes to who is a Jew or who is an Israelite. When you look at the word Jew, you should be looking at Judea. Who's from Judea? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. If you're not from any of those three, you are not what you would call from Judea or Judah. Now, let's, let's, let's go into Asher now. Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 29, verse 13. Yes. What's the lock 30 and 13. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Blessed. Asher. Now, ble now, Asher was blessed with some serious, some serious land. Okay. Which would pay great dividends for Asher in the last days. Okay. Let's go into Asher in the last days in Genesis 49. Uh, Genesis 49, verse 20. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. He shall yield royal dainties. To show you in the last days, Asher would be on some serious fertile land. And the royal dainties 
would be utilized for serious uh, uh, trade th through not only the Americas, the world. Okay? Asher is your modern day Colombians, is your modern day Venezuelans, all the way into parts of Brazil that are not inhabited by the slaves that came over there. So all the way from Colombia to Venezuela into parts of Brazil is where the tribe of Asher state, state claim once they came over to the Americas, South America. Read it again. Uh, back in the book of Genesis 49, verse 20. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, he shall yield royal dainties. Go ahead. Uh, moving on to Deuteronomy 33, and uh, verse 24. And of Asher he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let Asher be blessed with children. They multiply, read. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. And let him dip his foot in oil. So in the last days, we would look at the Asherites who were taken into a land where no mankind dwelt. And out of all the places in the new world, Asher would be living on oil-rich territory or property or land. All the way from Colombia to Venezuela, you have what? Oil. They dip their feet in oil. That means they would run and they'll kick open a rock or dig up open a ground and a gush of oil would come through. So Asher in the last days will be living on oil rich property. It's in the Bible. Now, look at what happened in Venezuela. What was the guy they just killed in Venezuela? Uh, Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> he made sure, Hugo Chavez made sure that his people benefited from the riches that came from the oil. See? He was in league also with the Libyan uh, guy they killed. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi. He was in league with Gaddafi. So, there was a plan to bring forth the New World Order. And then in that plan the Europeans had, they had to first get rid of Saddam Hussein, and they had to get rid of next Gaddafi, and the next in pecking order that would fall in these dominoes was who? Chavez. They had that plan well before 911 happened. They would use 911 as a springboard to destroy all of their enemies. See? They finally killed off the king, or you might as well call him the king of Venezuela, which was Shedaz, because he made sure all his people ate. Mm -hmm. What happened once they killed Shedaz? They put a puppet in place that would work for the New World Order. And now in Venezuela, they're standing in lines for food. The world government and banks have confiscated all the food and all the wealth of Venezuela, even though the land is still fertile, they will arrest any farmer who feeds the population. They have confiscated all the farms and say the government will pay you, but we must distribute the food in a crisis, which is a man made or what you would call an Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030 made famine. It's an agenda to destroy the children of Asha in South America. Asha still has some of the greatest fertile land, but none of them can benefit from it because now it has been confiscated under emergency orders. See? But it's what the Most High said would happen. He's calling Asha back. Now you must turn to your God and put down Catholicism and put down this modern day Christianity and come back to the true Christ. He's the only one who could save you through this family. See? Give me some more on Asher here. Uh, verse 25. Thy shoe shall be from brass, and as thy days, so shall be thy strength. So, so like thy shoe shall be iron and brass. 
And as thy days, so shall be thy strength. So shall be thy strength, because they're known for being physically strong people. One more with Asher, when it comes to the oil. One moment, there's one more scripture on that. Yeah, that's it. Read it. One moment. One moment. That's it. It's uh You have it there? Job 29. Job 29 and 6. Read. Mm -hmm. I'll start at verse 5. It says, When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me. When my children were about me, read. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. And the rock poured me out rivers of oil. It's speaking of the Most High linking up with his people and bringing forth riches out of the earth to support them. And oil was a gift that was given to Asher. See? That's what made Asher a rich, fertile, strong superpower for a while. But eventually, America came in by saying, by, by cutting the deal first with the Middle East and saying, well, listen, we're going to buy oil from you and, and X everyone out if you will allow it to be purchased only through the petrol dollar. So they made a, a deal with the Saudis first. So by that, by doing so, if anyone else wanted to play ball, they would have to follow the same or they'll be what? blackballed. So the other countries had to now follow what the Saudis were doing because the Saudis had a had a, 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 a what you would call an untapped wealth of oil. They, they didn't know how long it was so much oil resources in, 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 Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. They didn't know how long they would have to compete with this and get dried out because Saudi had so much oil. So eventually Venezuela signed an agreement and said, okay, We'll let it happen through the dollar. And other countries began to comply. But once they did that, the American dollar now had full power over the world. And they had all control of what? The oil resources. By what? Distributing it through the American dollar. By doing so now, America can now dictate how the operations would go, will, will deal going forward. To the point where they would infiltrate and take the oil from each country. See? And that's what happened to our people uh, of Asher. There's one other gift that I wanted to pull out concerning Issachar before we go. That we left out. Is the fact that Issachar would have the power or had the power in the end days. To look in the stars and read what the scriptures call the tables of heaven. They was able to read the stars and know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and it link up to the uh, it, it links directly up into the Incas and Mayans, and how they were able to build constructs that link directly to the stars. That's over in South America today. Let me touch on that real quick concerning Issachar. I don't want to leave anything out concerning Issachar because at one point Issachar had power to read the stars, to know when to crop when enemies were coming, all different types of things. It wasn't until Issachar began to sacrifice their children to Moloch, like we did in 721, that the Most High sent the Romans against them. That's when he sent the quote-unquote Edomites, or white man, against them. Because they began to fall right back into what they were kicked out of the land for. Mm -hmm. See? Let's go. 
of First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles 12 and 32, read it. And of the children of Issachar, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, had understanding of the times, and that's why you have what you would call in Mexico a calendar. And they say beyond a certain time in that calendar, they don't have no information past what they would call, what they said it was 2012. But really, we know it wasn't 2012 because the Romans are not calculating time correctly. But they know this clock stops at a consummation. So the Issacharites had the secrets of the times also. The same thing we broke down a few months ago, the Issacharites ancient priest had. All right, read which were men that had understanding of the times. Of the times. To know what Israel ought to do. To know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. So there was 200 men under Issachar in ancient times who were, who were led with the task by the Most High to direct Israel from reading the stars. So when they came over to the Americas, the constructs they built were aligned with the, with the stars and had prophecy within it that linked directly to the Bible. Issacharites are the Mexicans. Asherites are the children of Venezuela, the children of Colombia, all the way up into Brazil. That concludes two of the tribes of Israel. And, uh, of course, we'll be back next week to conclude and finish off the 12 tribes found. The 12 lost tribes found in our modern time. All right, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, huh? I don't know if you want to finish it up now. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Elder Lawyer said he done pulled up some history on Asher. We're going to just throw that in there real quick and then answer a few questions because we do have yes, sir. Yes, sir. a feast to attend. The end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. There's quite a few quotes, so I'll just do a, a few on the Brazilians and a few on the Peruvians. Okay. This is, uh, it deserves to be remarked that the Brazilians, whose manners notwithstanding the distance of their respect, respective territories, bore a striking resemblance to those of the North American Indians are declared by the Portuguese writer Emmanuel de Morses to have presented an exact counterpart to the manner of the Jews, mm. except in their pra uh, not practicing the rite of circumcision. It says, uh, if, a Brazilian wounds, if a Brazilian wounds another, he is wounded in the same part of the body with equal punishment, limb for limb or life for life, according to the Mosaic law. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll jump and just read one more. It says, uh, Lerius tells us that the Indians of Brazil wash themselves ten times a day and that the husbands have no matrimonial intercourse with their wives till their children are either weaned or grown pretty hardy, which is similar to the custom of these northern Indians and that of the Israelites. Exactly. There was a time of separation after, child, after childbearing. Because why? You didn't want to take the strength from the woman that was actually weaning and giving strength to the child. Mm -hmm. That's in the law. Go on. Yep. Also, another thing I want to mention is the fact that they keep preparing, comparing them to the North American Indians. Yes. Showing that these are the same they, they, people from they, the same nation. They came out of the ten tribes. Mm -hmm. That's why they compare them to the North American Indians. Not that they are the North American Indians, right. but these are similar customs from one part of the Americas to the next, mm -hmm. proving that they all must be from the lost tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. right? And the Peruvians too. The Peruvians are also part of Asher, mm -hmm. Peru. Come on. I'll just read two on Peru. It says, uh, okay. it says, Polo de Ordegando or states this curious fact in his unedited trespass concerning the matters of the Peruvians wherein he observes that blasphemy, sacrilege, adultery, and homicide were four crimes that the Peruvian laws punished with the greatest severity. Moving on to the next one, it says, They Peruvians seem likewise to have imitated the Jews 
and their sacerdotal custom, meaning their priestly custom. Mm -hmm. It says, Balboa in the 18th chapter in his un unedited history of Peru, to which he had given the title of Miscellaneous Antarctica, mentions along with the tassel, a scepter, a mantle, and sandals as composing to the regalia of the Incas. It would appear that from Garcia asserts that the dress of the Peruvians was more like that of the Jews. Of the Jews, the Israelites. Mm -hmm, than was the Mexicans, whilst the sandals of the people of New Spain were strictly in the Hebrew fashion. And it goes on and on. It says, uh, we know that the expression of John the Baptist, there cometh one mightier than I after me, and the latchet of his shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. The nature of the Hebrew sandals which probably exactly resembled those worn by the Mexicans. Okay. And this, this leads me to another place. Mm. After we finish the 12 tribes of Israel, on our site, gatheringofchrist.org, under each tribe, this new history found that we did for the 12 tribes will be added to each tribe. So now you have the history, the references, and all the points that we pull out with this particular lesson's uh, the 12 lost tribes found and give you some more in-depth study to go into just by going into our website gatheredofchrist.org alright brother some powerful history yes sir we tackled two and we're going right into the most high's high holy day the end of the feast of tabernacles where we eat and close out the holy day of the most high the holy week of the most high the feast of tabernacles now what I can do because it's 5:30 on the uh, well it's it's uh what what time is it in the states it's uh it's a uh, what time is it in the states uh 12 should be 12 30. It's about 12:30 in the states right yeah, yeah. So this well we're right on point with the time I thank the most high for that I can answer questions for a maximum brothers and sisters of 10 minutes and then after that I would have to wish you all God's speed and uh we'll see you tomorrow in the academy going into a profound lesson, tracing the serpent seed. And we're going to more so stay on the side this time. We, we deal with the different angles. But we're going to deal with the characters, the fallen characters that fell into the earth from the beginning, leading up to the flood, and what happened after the flood. We're going to really <laughs> just deal with that part of, 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 of Satan and his angels who are operating against us all the way till uh, this side of the flood. Okay? And it's deep that when we go into it, we're going to sh show you proof that really the fallen angels and the demons that came from them, are f they fear us. Mm -hmm. They fear us. So they had to turn it around through media and all that to make them out to be scary and so that they can take the higher ground when it comes to war against us when really... We are their horror story. They know that according to the Most High, at the end of this, those of the righteous that makes, make, make it through will judge them. Mm -hmm. They fear us. And see, that's why the Most High says he didn't give us the spirit of fear. When you lose that spirit of fear, then you become mighty. And now you're ready for war. We have to lose this thing where we are afraid of everything. Okay? The Most High is, set, is actually establishing us to be leaders and judges of this earth and to shake that captive fear mentality. So, that, so, that, so tomorrow when I go into Tracing Serpent Seed, we go into it, mm -hmm. we're going to tackle it from that angle to show you that they are fallen ones who have no power. They are relegated to these laws within the earth. They are bound and imprisoned with laws the Most High made to imprison them here. See? So they don't have no power. And when we tap into the power of Christ, the, guess what? There's no weapon formed against us that will prosper. That we actually have power to move them out of the way. If they're bothering us or they're bothering people we love, we have the power to move them. See? And they are afraid. But we lose that power. I mean, but, but, but they are afraid. But we lose that power when they make us fearful. See? When they make us feel that they are stronger. Oh, so, uh, something is in my house. Something is, uh, something has been bothering me. Something is, uh, I need some help. See, that's what they want you. 
See, when you, can, when you can identify those, the enemy that has been doing these things to you and understand who they are and what their weaknesses are and the fact that their greatest weakness is, is when you realize the power in you is the greatest weakness. When they understand that, that, that they're not contending with that fearful one that was built to be fearful from birth. When they're contending with Christ, that's when they flee. So we're going to go into all that tomorrow mm -hmm. and trace in serpent, the serpent seed. Because yeah, they fail. Yeah, they are powerful. But they're not that powerful. Okay? They only have power we yield to them. Like our father Adam and Eve yielded the dominion to them. They were nothing until our father sinned and gave them power. And, and guess what? That never changed, brothers and sisters. They have no power. They only have the power that we yield to, to them through fear. And we're going to be going into that tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. Then we have to wish you all Godspeed, okay? Okay, the chat is open. Okay, I need you to help me with this law, man. All right. Uh, someone clear that. It's 1033 right now in the States. It's 1033 in the States. Okay, all right. 1033. Okay, that's good. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's 1033. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm about to say, that's way too yeah, late. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I got the wrong clock on my computer, so that's the right. issue here. All right. Yeah, it's 10. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. All right. All right, so let's go through a few of these here. Seem like they be having any questions. Yeah, yeah. I want to hit them at once, right? <laughs> right. They have it loaded and ready, right? Oh, okay. Quite a few of them here. This is uh, this is this is Mr. C. My wife and I were at the DMV this week and were informed by the state employee that in 2020, five years from now, the RFID goes in effect. Which, if you the RFID check, RFID check, Salakia, goes in effect. Which, if you do not have a star on your driver's license or the national ID card, you will not be allowed to travel out of your residential state. Man, Glinda one four four. This is Mr. C. My wife and I were at DMV this week and were informed by a state employee that in twenty twenty. The RFID check goes into effect, which if they do not have a star, a Satan, Lucifer star, on your driver license or have the national ID card, you will not be allowed to travel out of your residential state. And that's pro that was prophesied in Second Edwards. Mm -hmm. I think about the 16th chapter, right? Yep. Where it goes into that you will not be able to go from city to city. And they, I, hey, it's here. And you know what? When they say 2020... That's still a way in which they try to make you believe it's coming down the line. What they don't tell you is when there's a national emergency or something where an order is signed, then they will fast track anything that's on the books. So that's 2020 if everything stays the same. Mm -hmm. They're not telling you that all these, uh, the infrastructure of this is already in place. That's what they're not telling you. All right, what's, what's the next one? Asher Israel. Uh, would it be okay to have a Jewish mohel do a circumcision instead of a doctor? As long as they don't do the thing with their lips mm -hmm. and on, on your child. Because they got a thing where they, they want to do... Listen, you would have to be present. They can do the circumcision. Make sure they don't do that thing. That, you know, that, that nasty stuff they be doing. But yes, if they do it without that, absolutely yes. It says, uh, the Jewish Mohel does not require a vitamin K shot. And speaking of vitamin K, I have a picture of vitamin K that I'm going to show in the academy tomorrow. Vitamin K is rat poison. Mm -hmm. They use vitamin K. It tells you on, on the side of, of, of rat poison, on the ingredients, vitamin K is the active ingredient. Go, look, go, go on YouTube and put rat poison, vitamin K. They shoot our children with rat poison, and we think it's okay because uh, because they call it or they're coining it a a a, a vitamin. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> See, that's why, brothers and sisters, I don't take vitamins and none of that mess they got out there. I'm going to tell you straight up. Any vitamin, anything I get, I get through my food. Period. I don't want no supplements, nothing. I, anything I get is through my food. I eat good food. That's it. Good herbs and all that. Because they use these words vitamins, and I think that's a trap to make you believe it's healthy. So that they can poison you under the guise of, of, of health. Alright, next oh. one. Says, uh, it's 1030 in New York. Uh, do we cast out demons by yelling at them in the name of Christ? Or only by fasting and prayer? This, see, the whole deal is, okay. First of all, if you don't know how to do it, you shouldn't deal with it at all. That's number one. Because you had those who were doing disciples time thought that they could do it too. And the demons realized that they, these people were not qualified and ended up jumping into these people. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And by the questions that you're asking, and no disrespect to you, you shouldn't be even thinking about this. Okay? Now, but when it comes to it, when you get the knowledge of, of, first of all, you must be in full power in the spirit to understand what you're dealing with. Okay, so you should be, you should be studying, subtly and fasting and praying. And that's not just you in a corner somewhere on your knees. It's your thoughts. It's your mindset towards the most high. It's your operation and how you're acting and how you're dealing. These are all actions of prayer in, in the earth that you're you're mindful of the Most High 24 hours a day. doesn't matter what is the setting. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, it ain't about yelling, okay? <laughs> it's about identifying the spirit that's, that, that's vexing and having the person recognize the spirit that's vexing. Because it's the person's power that helped pull the demon out. It's not just a person. It's not no taboo magic here where you got power to cast something out. It doesn't work that way. What, what's going on is that our system have programmed us to make us believe that these activities within us is part of our unique behavior and that it's a part of us. We don't separate the demonic possession from our being the most high created. So when it comes to these things, you must have the person recognize there's something in them that's against them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then have the spirit operate and say what it's doing against the person so that the person can know that it's they're not by themselves. And now the person wanted out. They want to release the spirit. And now through that power, you, you, you use the name of the Most High in Christ and you together move that spirit. That's how it's done. Okay, that's how it's done. It's not no, you got some magic trick. See, and that's why Christ told the disciples, some cannot come out through fasting and pray. Because the disciples, to some degree, were just using the power of Christ to do things. So the most high, Christ knew that he was going to leave soon. And he said, listen, there's another level to this. You have to live this and be operating in this. It really worked. You just not you can't gonna use my power because I'm here. Now you must now come in and, and connect to the Father like I am doing 24 hours a day. You must stay prayed into this. See? So that's the true understanding of when Christ said that. Not that, okay, I'm doing my own business. Okay, I'm gonna fast and pray real quick so that I can go cast out a demon. It doesn't work that way. Okay, it's how you're living, how you're operating, understanding what you're fighting against, understanding the person, having the person recognize the element, and have the person know when the spirit came in. So you have to ask certain questions to the person, so they all know when the when the gate when the door opened. So the person have to get full power first, and understanding that they're dealing with a separate entity. All right. So that's how it works, that, that, the, the way I can explain. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's spiritual scenarios to this too. And it's where we must be in the spirit to even open that door, to even actually go there because it's dangerous. 
Okay? It's a very dangerous thing and it's not a game. Okay? To, to add to that real quick about the part of even the person who is being attacked by demons must, you know, believe and understand that they can be healed from it. Exactly. The time which, uh, exactly. Yeshai, you remember that time Yeshai went into the city and he couldn't perform any miracles of healing. Exactly. Because there was no unbelief. Exactly. There was a place where Christ couldn't do no healing. He just left the city. Mm -hmm. Because the whole sound town was filled with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect example. Yep. That it had to be something within the person that believed in the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the spirit you leak into. And where two or more gathered, he's in the midst. Now you got the power to move that thing. Mm -hmm. If that person don't believe, I don't care who it is. Christ couldn't heal a person who didn't want it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, next one here says, uh, Please respond to my email before the academy tomorrow, please, if possible. Um, someone says, is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacle to be treated as a Sabbath? And can we cook on that day? Of course you can cook because it's a feast. Just like the priest was able to perform for the temple even on the Sabbath. According to the law, they were breaking the Sabbath, right? Because they were working. But they, but without, the, without them working, could they be a feast? Could they be a ceremony? <laughs> Somebody had to work. So, grace applies when you're doing it for the feast. So, the answer to that is yes. Uh, next one here says, uh, Shalom, Elder. Is it, if it's a feast day in conjunction with a regular Sabbath, are we allowed to cook? Getting 13, uh, we answer that. This is, uh, getting 13 if 10 tribes left and 3 stayed, was Dan added to the count back then? Some of Dan was added to the count, but the majority of Dan left and went into parts of Greece. Okay? But only a small portion of Dan, and it was so small of a portion that you really can't count Dan. And Dan, Dan right now, according to scriptures, is counted as the Gentiles. So that's why I'm not even going to go into Dan on the 12 tribes lesson, because I don't want to get it distorted. Dan is now Gentile. There's no gate for, for them in the kingdom of heaven. They must come in through the Gentiles because they got their dominion under the Gentile rule. They got their power under the Gentile rule. Okay? Uh, someone says, uh, Shalom, is there a way that I could get all of the lessons of the 12 tribes? I am new to your classes. I also need to be baptized. I'm in Harrisburg, PA. We will get you baptized. We'll link you into my... To, to my great brother over there in Philadelphia, and we got some, some in Pittsburgh, too, that you can link in with. All right. Uh, and they're holding it down over there, and I want to say hi to their family. And uh, you can type in YouTube, Gathering of Christ Church, the 12 lost tribes found. Okay, you, it, it'll break it all, all the way down for you. Or you can stay on this channel, Go to our videos that's available publicly, and you'll see all the, all, all the all the ones we went into up until this time recently. Okay, that means when you go to ustream.tv, you type in "Gathering of Christ," you'll see us pop up. Look at your look at those videos, and you will see all the videos you need right there up until this time, dated up until this time. All right, hope that answers your questions. Send an email to gatheringas1 at AOL.com and we will answer in the in the uh, in the order it's it's received. And like I said, brothers and sisters, be, be, because the academy is time sensitive, which means if we don't process it, people don't get in the class, these are actually moved to an administrator who deals with those. And that's why those academy questions be answered in a more expedited fashion because the, the academy is time sensitive. If it's not answered, then they're not in the class. Okay? The other things which are important and the other letters are important, they are answered in the order that they are received. But mind you, you talk about hundreds and hundreds of, 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 of letters. Now while we have four and five people dealing with the email on a regular basis, and I jump in on the more important ones, you still, we still have to deal with them in the order that they came in. So some people might send in the academy payment with 
the question and say, well, why was the academy portion answered and not the question that came with it? I know y'all got it. Well, it doesn't work that way because the person that deal with the administration for the academy is not in position to answer questions. <laughs> you understand? What they'll do is they'll process the academy, which is time sensitive. And if your email is not an emergency, it'll go into the rest of the email in its proper order to be answered in that order. Okay? Just wanted to put that out there for you. All right, a few more here. This is, um, there's one that was missed. Where? Uh, Dion Court. Dion Court 6. Okay, Dion Court 6. Go ahead. It says, um, my husband and I went to Cancun for our honeymoon. My husband tried to wake up some of Issachar using scriptures. They kind of laughed it off. What's a good approach to wake them up? Well, you have to realize, unless you're on a mission in which you're going to be there in a ministry for a long period of time, mm -hmm. then it's just in passing. You understand? The whole deal is, when it comes to a teacher, it says being apt to teach. Being apt to teach is not you just going to teach somebody hoping that they listen. You have to understand what, they, what their needs are. And use that as a platform to show them the most high. So usually they'll come to you. And no matter what it, they're dealing with, it leads to the same road. It's an opportunity. But when you when we are more aggressive and we're trying to get somebody to see something, it's different because they're, people are only interested in what they're interested in. They're only concerned with what they're concerned with. You understand? So if they ask you and concerned about something, it's different. So being a fisher of men... You must bring forth the bait for that particular person. You must know what they need because people are only interested in what they need. <laughs> you understand? So you must come from that vantage point and not I'm showing them something and, you know, and hope they get it. Mm -hmm. It must be on a path of on the path of what they've been looking for anyway. And that'll be revealed to you. You understand? But you just can't say something because it's truth and hope people will get it. It's not for all people. So I'm around many people that sometimes I say nothing at all. And when the opportunity presents itself, I know that, okay, I got to talk to this person. See? <laughs> you understand? Then I'll be like, you know what? Man, give me a call. Uh, or I'll sit down and say, man, we need to have lunch. We need to talk. Because I now I see that 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 door of opportunity is open because they need something, they need that, and I know I know what can fill that void. Okay, but when I go out to teach and when I go out to speak and when I go out, at, you know, speaking on the street, now that's a designated effort. But I'm still not dealing with people as individuals. I'm putting out the word, and now the spirit is bringing those who are interested. Mm -hmm. See that. So, hey, it'll be 90 people that walk by. And it'll be probably three people that say, you know what? I need this. Something is happening here. Mm -hmm. See? All right. What is it? Someone says, so is tomorrow the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement been passed. Uh, also, is it possible to make tomorrow's lesson public? Tomorrow's lesson will not be public. You have to be in the academy. Uh, I know it's going to be a very deep lesson, and I would love to listen to it, but I'm not yet in the academy. You can get in the academy. Send an email to gatherings1 at AOL.com. We'll tell you how to get in, and we'll make sure you get in by tomorrow. By, by 8 p.m. tomorrow, 8, 8, 8, by 8 a.m. Eastern, you'll be in if you follow the steps we give you. Send an email to gatherings1 at AOL.com. All right? We have many things that are public out there. The academy is for those who are dedicating themselves within this work outside of just listening to us on YouTube or Ustream. There are some things for the public. There's other things for those who are students who are looking to learn on the next level. Okay? And I will be, if we put it out there on the public, in the public, we would be actually minimizing people's sacrifice who have, come, who have actually dedicated themselves to make this work as a school. What you got there? Let's put it there. Next question. Okay, what's the next question here? Um, 
Something about uh, uh, Ephesians 2.15. Can we explain it in context? Read Ephesians 2.15. It says, uh, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Okay, when it says abolished in his flesh, what's that? That's him dying, right? So the ordinance, is, the ordinance is speaking of is the ordinance of sacrifice that was attached with the holy days in the Old Testament. See? So that was the part of the ordinance that was abolished. That's not saying don't follow the Day of Atonement or don't follow the Feast of Tabernacles. It's just the sacrifices that you see in the Old Testament have been abolished with the death of Christ. I don't need to go out and find a he goat and a hen or a lamb and all that exactly like the law says. Because that ordinance have been abolished through Christ's death. A death for a death in the Old Testament. See that? Christ's death is that death. So when I read the sacrificial part of the law, of the commandments, I know that I don't have to follow that. Christ, Christ's sacrifice is sufficient. Mm -hmm. That's how you break that down. Christians have been totally deluded by believing that all the laws and holy days are done away with and use this scripture to say that it's done away with. And it's not speaking of that. How can you say those days are done away with and pick up Christmas and Easter and, 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 and Sunday? So you're saying the Most High did away his days so that you can accept Satan's pagan days? Doesn't make any sense. If he's done away with holy days, then you shouldn't be following anything then. You shouldn't be going to church on Sundays. You shouldn't be celebrating Easter or Christmas if you're saying Christ abolished holy days. See, but they use that as an excuse to say we don't have to follow the laws in the Bible. But it's, and by default, you can follow Satan days. That's why they did that. See? Mm -hmm. I'll just read up a few verses too to, to also help with that. Yeah, read it. It says, uh, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Yeshua, ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Yeshua. For he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition as having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Exactly. Through his death he made peace. Mm -hmm. So the ordinance he done away with is sacrifice. See? It's not speaking of holy days being done away with. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, next one here says, uh, what was the reference in the Jewish Encyclopedia? Uh, the Shingo Jew Jewish Encyclopedia, author Mordecai Schreiber. They ask him, is it the author Mordecai Schreiber? Uh, it's the regular Jewish Encyclopedia you would find online. Just type in Jewish Encyclopedia and the, uh, the website should come up. Okay. Uh, next one says, uh, there's supposed to be something going down with Farrakhan and the Gadites on 10, 10, 15. Okay, interesting. Uh, someone says, Shalom elders requiring lawyer. I praise the Most High and Yeshia for you every day. I am a follower. I am a follower for three years. I remember when you both were in Philly. Will you ever come back? If so, I can plan to be there. Also, is there an elder in Philly? My family and I need the fellowship and baptism. I feel close to you. Stay focused and blessed. Awesome lesson as usual. Smile. Okay, I'm glad you did. You were with us in Philadelphia. And yes, I was just back in Philly. This June I was there. And we have a lovely following of brothers and sisters and some leaders over there. One brother and his father in particular holding it down with the rest of the brothers and sisters in Philadelphia. So absolutely. Send us an email to gatherings1 at AOL.com and I will connect you with the elder and deacon there immediately. Okay. I will respond to the email before the academy. Yes. Uh, a few more. Uh, Conviction 144. Shalom, elders. I'd like to know why the name of Ahia is in the Kabbalah. That's a good question. The name of Ahia is in the Kabbalah because it's the highest God to be reverenced on earth. Okay? That's why. 
Now the question should not be, why is his name in the Kabbalah? As the highest name over Yahweh and Jehovah and everything. The question you should have is, why is the Jewish people who know that Ahia is the highest name, why are they hiding it from the rest of the population? That's what, that's what you should ask. Because there's other names in the Kabbalah that you know about for years, like Jehovah or Yahweh. You know about the Tetragrammaton. Why they never told you about Ahia? So it's good you have a question, but it's the question you aren't asking, that, that, you're, that, that you didn't ask, is the question you should ask. How is it that they had this name in the Kabbalah over all the gods, including Yahweh and Jehovah and the Tetragrammaton, and never told you? We never said that, that the Satanists didn't know the Most High's name. We never said, they know his name, but they don't invoke him. They hide him from the rest of the population. See? It's the highest God. It's the all-existent. And they made you believe that Yahweh, which is a lesser God, was equal to Ahia. When you look at the word Yahweh in the Tetragrammaton, they'll tell you it's the same as Ahia. They lied. So yes, we never say that they didn't know the Most High's name. Of course they know the Most High's name. But guess what? We didn't get it from the Kabbalah. I didn't find out it was in a, in a Kabbalah until about two years ago. I got it because the Bible told us in the Hebrew his name was Ahia Ashar Ahia. See? And once that information started coming out, then people started looking into Ahia. And a brother online ended up looking at the Kabbalah and seeing Ahia at the top of all names. And I'm like, well, he just confirmed everything we knew from the beginning. That our God is above all gods, even the gods over the Kabbalah. See? What? Uh, next one here. What's next? Uh, we answered that one. Yeah, right. This is a uh, Shalom elders, uh, please, regarding Hosea 7, 8 through 9, didn't this happen even, even before they went to America? Yes, it happened before America. Absolutely. You're speaking of 700 some odd years that they left outside the land. Yes. But also, it's a fulfillment that they will be mixing themselves with the people. That didn't stop when they got to the Americas. When the conquistadors came over, they mixed themselves with the southern, I mean, with the northern kingdom that was in America, in South America. So, yes, that is true. Uh, next one, this says, uh, Shalom elders, lately I've been hearing a lot about Ethiopians professing to be Jews. Is this factual, misconstrued, not true, or partially correct? Uh, I'm aware that Moses married an Ethiopian, but that's just... That, that does not make the whole nation Israel. Okay. That's partially true. The original Kushites from Ethiopia is a different race mm -hmm. from our people who are in Ethiopia and made Ethiopia home. There's a clear distinction between the two. All right? But yes, there's a large population of Israelites in Ethiopia who are Israelites. Okay? Someone says, who are the 12 kings? Last question, who are the 12 kings? What 12 kings? I'm not sure, they may have to uh, you elaborate on that. Elaborate on the 12 kings you're speaking of. Matter of fact, we're beyond the time. We're right on the hour and I have a holy day to attend. It's feast, so I have to go now. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Any other questions, send an email to gavinus1 at AOL.com. Stay tuned for Elder Gabar. He can take this further. But I've held up a, an entire feast. So uh, I would like to be here with you, but there's people waiting. So let's say the Lord's Prayer and we'll wish you all Godspeed.